Boys and girls, this lesson is a continuation of our introduction to secondary colours. In this painting here, you can see that there is a majority of green, which is a secondary colour, and then we've introduced some small sections of orange. We have three secondary colours, purple, green and orange. Now, I'm going to show you how you can paint your own orange grove. So what you need to do is imagine that you are an orange farmer and you own an orange grove and you want to have your own painting. I'm going to give you a piece of clean white paper. Please make sure that your name is on the back. You need a soft brush and some water and you're going to get a palette of colours. There is green but what I want you to do is actually use yellow and blue and white to create new greens. You're going to learn how to use white to add a tint, which means that you're making that colour lighter, and then you can add more blue to add a, a shade which makes that green darker. First thing that I would like to do is I'm going to mix a little bit of white and blue, just nicely, carefully, there, and I'm going to paint my sky first. When you're painting you should always begin with the background. Make sure you leave some sections of your sky white so it looks like it's wispy clouds. I'm going to add a bit of water, a little bit more blue and white, and I'm going across sideways, not up and down, but across. And I'm kind of dabbing a little bit as well. And to soften those brush marks, I'm just adding a little bit of water. And there now I've got my sky. So it's not too far off from the original painting there. And then I've left some white to look like clouds. So it, because the paper's white, it doesn't mean I have to paint white on top. I can leave parts of it to show through. Now the next section, I want to take a little bit of this green and white. I'm going to clean my brush and then I'm going to take a little bit of this yellow and I'm going to start with the lightest colour of green first. So this is a lovely green that I've made here. And if you look at the original painting there appears to be like three rows of orange groves. So I'm going to start and watch how I move my brush. I'm making it swirl. So I'm, I'm using the lightest colour and I'm swirling across and I'm kind of making candy floss clouds, but they're going to be trees. Now I'm going to add a little bit more yellow and a little bit more green. And I'm going to go just slightly lower and make another row. I'm spinning it. And these are the tops, the treetops. And I want the treetops to be the lightest part because this is the lightest part where, it's, where the sun is hitting. Where the sun doesn't hit, it gets darker. And I'm just going to make one more row underneath. And again, just nice dabbing it, swirling it. I'm letting my wrist twist and swirl. Okay. Now I've got three rows of treetops there, so just like here, three rows of treetops. Now I'm going to take my paint palette again and I'm going to start darkening it up. Still got my yellow and I'm going to add a little bit of blue now and I'm going to start darkening it up with the green. And this time I'm going to come, come up here, I'm going to make sure that it's dark enough and br start bringing it down. Add a little bit of green. I'm, I'm kind of sponge painting really with this brush. And I'm, I can add little highlights of yellow in. And I'm going to keep going. Keep adding that green. Sponging it in with my brush. I'm dabbing it in and I'm going to come in a little bit deeper with some blues and this is where my shadows would come in and add in a little tint of green as well 
okay so there now I've got my first row and I'm going to continue that on the next rows as well so see how I'm spinning that brush I'm moving it around fairly rapidly I'm starting to make shapes like round ball shapes for the trees so they they still have their individuality can add in a little bit of blue a little bit of green you can even you do this and mix the colors on the paper as you go around doing it okay and I'll do the, the last row underneath there bring it down now I've got my rows of orange grove trees now what I want to do now is I want to take a piece of cardboard and I've got a little bit of brown paint and we've done this in the past where we've used cardboard and we've added in some details of the branches and I want you to do the same so now you're looking at the shapes that you've created each one of those sort of like balls of green and you're going to individualize them now by giving them branches so each one's a unique orange grove tree okay and what's so great about this cardboard is that if you find the piece that's got the opening with the corrugated center inside you get that kind of barky texture effect as well so if you can try and use that edge that's even better and if I bring this up closer you can see if you can see the texture that I'm getting there it just adds that extra dimension and creativity to your artwork now the final thing we need to do is to get a q-tip when you have a q-tip I want you to clean your brush and mix a little bit of red just a little bit of red to yellow don't go the other way if you add yellow to a big bit of red big dollop of red it's going to take you a long time to create that orange because red's a very powerful color so with yellow you only need the slightest touch of red now you can see I've made an orange and with my q-tip I'm going to dip it into my orange and this is where I'm going to then add my orange trees or sorry my oranges to my trees okay and once I've got all my oranges on and I'm happy with my effect you can set it to the side onto the drying rack and you have completed your project that covers two of the secondary colors and that should wrap up that section boys and girls so we've already learned about our primary colors red blue and yellow and we've done purple green and now we've done our orange okay now boys and girls it's your turn let's go and make some art <laughs>